The Church of the Cross on Ash Wednesday. Um, before we started uh, tonight, first of all, we had a, a open church for Ashes at the big okay. And also, Logan and I put away a word we don't say in words. You want to come and whisper it in the microphone? Can <laughs> say it. And Lent. So we put it away. And when do we take it back out? On Easter. On Easter. So um, welcome. We are beginning our 40 day journey towards Easter, um, a day, you could say, of fasting and repentance. Um, we're going to talk more about fasting and giving up um, on Sunday, but I encourage you to think about these differently. Logan has a question. Yes, sir. Is Leprechaun's Day next day? Is Leprechaun's Day next day? No. <laughs> Leprechaun's Day is on March 17th. I know that. Yeah. St. Patrick's Day. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's we're March making. We're going um, to We're gonna catch a lot of leprechauns at our school on that day. Oh, okay. Leprechauns. Then they take you to all the treasure, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. We're going to talk about treasure and on Sunday and gold, yes. And we both. Okay. okay, we're going to start with our opening hymn. I want Jesus to walk with me. We'll sing. Our first reading tonight is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, and verses 1 through 12. Shout out, do not hold back, 
lift up your voice like a trumpet, announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of your God. They asked me, they asked of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. It is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself. Excuse me. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? It is to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you, excuse me, will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the feast, excuse me, is that this not the feast that I chose, that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and you and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. day. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in harsh places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. Our psalm we're going to read responsibly is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 17. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth within me. And, and would have me to know wisdom deep within. Remove my same sins with hyssop, and shall I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let, Let me hear joy, joy and gladness at the body of the earth and the main growth. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your baptismal spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God, my salvation, and my tongue shall speak of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Will you take no delight in sacrifice for my not pleased with your offer? The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart. O God, you will not despise. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 through 610a. Excuse me, 
through six, uh, chapter 6 through 10. Um, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteous of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commanded ourselves in every way. Through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Word of God, word of life. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to our, your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Good evening and thank you for coming. As we begin our Lenten journey, my words will be short tonight. Did you hear that, Logan? as I believe that the Bible readings do not need a whole lot of explanation and to give us more time to focus on the imposition of ashes and Holy Communion. While Ash Wednesday is certainly solemn, it is not sad. Of course, the imposition of ashes remind us in the words that you are, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return do remind us of death. But the bigger and the better story that it is only our bodily death. We know that this time of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving is in preparation 
the glorious celebration of Easter, where God overcomes Jesus' death on the cross and we are all promised eternal life. In baptism, we are united and forgiven. Our gospel this evening gives us good advice on how to act during Lent. God always loves us. And in response, we can engage in activities that please God and bring us closer to God and our neighbors. But we are cautioned not to attract attention to ourselves, not to boast about what we have given or given up, not to brag about how long we pray each morning or evening or how much we've read our Bible or devotions. There will be many opportunities this Lent to reflect on how God has blessed us individually and as a church community. And in response, we are called to give abundantly. I'm going to close with a poem I found by a woman named Jan Richardson from a, a book called Circle of Grace, a book of blessings for the seasons. Then um, it's different than in your bulletin. We're gonna take a few minutes of silence and rather than going right into the hymn of the day, we'll move ahead to the invitation of Lent. Then when we do the prayers of the day, we'll sing the prayer, the hymn of the day between the prayer petitions. We'll get it, I promise. This is called Blessing the Dust. All those days, you felt like dust, like dirt, as if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind be scattered to the four corners or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. Did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient ashes, that makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us be marked not for sorrow, and let us be marked not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility or for thinking we are less than we are, but for cla claiming what God can do within the dust within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made, and the stars that blaze in our bones, and that galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. Rise is Friends in Christ today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. 
let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We fail to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. socially distanced. at home, remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Merciful God, hear our prayer.
renew your church, O God, when we have drifted from our call to proclaim repentance and to guide your people toward justice. Lead us back to you. Encourage believers who hold the church doors open to those who have felt excluded. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your creation, O God. Transform parched places into watered gardens. Preserve every creature that awaits the arrival of spring. Turn each of us from practices of environmental exploitation to become responsible stewards of all you have made. Merciful God. Renew our civic life, O oh God. Teach those in authority to advocate for the liberation of all who are oppressed and grant them courage to make difficult decisions. Renew our lives, O oh God. Spare your people from diseases of the body, mind, or spirit and send healing to those overcome by illness or grief. Restore us to the joy of your salvation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew this congregation, O God, during this 40 days of Lent. Confirm our sense of mission and expand our imagination for ministry. Deepen our faith, increase our love, and draw us into your unfolding work of healing and restoration. As we mark ashes on our foreheads, we give you praise, O God, for all the saints who died and yet are alive with you. Receive us with them into your eternal embrace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, 
we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your church now and forever. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. This is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. I think that we are a small. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen.
in a tweet. God, we give it back to God. Let's pray together the offering prayer. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Receive this blessing. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always, amen. Our sending hymn is blessed now, O God, the journey, number 326. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. We are encouraged to share the peace of the Lord with each other as you are comfortable and as you are leaving.